the, ba- the, the most common uh, instruments of torture, uh, and by the way, you know, if I may uh, say so, uh, I, I realize that some readers will be squeamish about these things, so I put all of my coverage of torture and execution in a single chapter, chapter four. Okay. So if anybody doesn't want to... <laughs> skip uh, it. <laughs> they can skip chapter four, although I have a feeling no one will. <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's keep chapter four short here, but I am curious, what, what were the most common then implements, and okay. what yeah. were the innovations they came up with? Absolutely. The, the most common was the uh, of torture by fire, which simply meant taking a, a bar of iron, heating it in the fire, and laying it against the skin or physically putting the, the feet of the victim up against a fire, sometimes slathering them with uh, grease to make the, the, heat, the effects of the heat more pronounced. That's fire so, torture. Again, once we, we use the expression, put their feet to the fire. That's what that means. That's exactly. what that's from. Okay. That's an inqu- inquisitorial reference. Right. Uh, the second uh, common torture was the ordeal by water, which meant pouring water down the throat of the victim to simulate drowning. We would call that waterboarding. Exactly the same uh, interrogation technique that we today call waterboarding. And and a point I make in my book uh, to to debate, as American politicians have done, whether waterboarding is torture would make any inquisitor laugh out loud. They they clearly understood that it was torture. Right. Um, The strappato, a very uh, common form of torture, uh, consisted of tying the victim often with his or her arms behind their back, uh, looping the rope over a, a beam, and then lifting them so that they hung by uh, the, their, their body weight, uh, caused pain as the ropes pulled, or to actually, in the uh, third or fourth or fifth degree of torture, to bounce them or to raise oh. them and drop them uh, to cause the joints to dislocate. Oh, um, the rack is a very famous instrument of torture. Sure. It's a bed. You tie the hands and feet to drums on either end and just pull them. Um, and the wheel was uh, just that, a, a, a wooden wheel. To, you strap the uh, prisoner to the wheel and uh, turn it uh, and apply whipping or beating. As so pretty do. much all the things we would have seen in a movie, a Hollywood movie about that. Exactly I mean, right. These, okay. None of these tortures, the standard tortures, would come as a surprise to anybody uh, who had seen a movie about uh, medieval Europe in general or the Inquisition in particular. Uh, and what about the Iron Maiden? Well, the Iron Maiden was a tool of, uh, of torture, but it was not used by the Inquisition. Uh, the, the tragic fact is that the human imagination uh, is capable of uh, creating great works of art, sublime works of art, that elevate uh, the human experience, but the same human uh, genius for creativity is sometimes applied in a darker way. And there was a, uh, a an iron monger in, in medieval Germany who invented the Iron Maiden, which was a case in the shape yeah. of a human form with a bunch of spikes inside. But it was not a standard tool of the Inquisition. Right. Uh, so, as we are leading through the story of the Grand Inquisitor's Manual, uh, we're just coming to a point where we'll probably get a break in here at the top of the hour. So, I'll keep this question short, and then I'll, I'll save for after the top of the hour a longer one. I'll get back to you in just a second. But so we we know that the Cathars then were the were originally in the crosshairs of the Inquisition. Did it work? The Cathars were exterminated by the Inquisition. It was one of the few examples of a targeted group that was completely eradicated. And so that gives them a sense that, hey, this is a plan. This is plan A. That's exactly right, that it, that it can work. And it was turned against uh, group after group, community after community, over the next 600 years, whenever someone... Uh, came under the suspicion of being a bad or insufficient Christian, they were at risk of the same treatment. Well, I want to get back to then, as we already have tied in, some of the uh, techniques of the Grand Inquisitor's Manual is still being in play today. I, I want to ask Jonathan Kirsch, coming up after the top of the hour, about the ancient Romans. As you just heard him say, some of those early instruments used and perfected during the Inquisition actually came about ironically from the years when the Romans were persecuting Christians. So, 
Why can't we say that the blueprint for today's inquisitions start with the Romans? Instead of blaming it on the church, don't we go back and say this is all ancient Rome's fault and we learned it all from them? Uh, why isn't that true? We'll find out coming up next. And then we'll get more into the modern Inquisition, How, what the legacy of the Inquisition is. Another hour with Jonathan Kirsch. And we're a little ways away yet before we'll be taking your calls, but we were just talking about uh, the uh, the way that the Inquisition operated in its various forms. Different countries conducted Inquisitions at different times, and for different reasons, to get rid of uh, one heretical group or another, uh, or at least in the eyes of the Church, anyway. They thought they were doing this for the benefit of, of the recipient of the torture or the death. Uh, that this was a way of bringing people back into the good grace of God. We'll, we'll talk about how that blueprint stays with us into modern day. And is it really fair to say it's the Grand Inquisitor's manual that we're still living with today? Why isn't it more accurate to say the Romans started the whole thing? So, Jonathan Kirsch was saying that uh, in his book, The Grand Inquisitor's Manual, there is um, there's more to this than just how people were tortured. It was the why, it was the where, it was the when. So, after the Cathars, then, who was the next group the Inquisition targeted? Well, the other uh, early group was the so-called Waldensians. They were also a kind of proto-Protestant group believed in a simplified uh, kind of Christianity, what they would argue was a purer and simpler form of Christianity. Uh, but once the uh, Inquisition began to reach peak operating efficiency, it really never stopped looking for victims wherever it could find them. Uh, and there's another very important point that we should pause and focus on. The Inquisition was a self-sustaining uh, machine for persecution, it took money and tr and property from its victims. Once you were arrested by the Inquisition, everything you owned was subject to seizure. And so, uh, as one victim of the Inquisition put it, it's a shame that the friars have to burn in order to eat. In other words, if they found a victim, uh, it was a source of income for them. And that also prodded the Inquisition into looking for heresies wherever they could uh, find them, and when they couldn't find them, uh, to simply invent his heresies to persecute. Well, it's the, the kind of the first order of every system is to maintain the system. Exactly, and that's why, it, it, that's why I call it a bureaucracy. Right. Because just as every government bureaucracy wants to maintain its existence, uh, so did the Inquisition. Uh, and as a result, we have uh, episodes in history where uh, people were accused of uh, heresies that they that simply did not exist. Uh, one uh, very famous example is the so-called witch craze or witch panic. Uh, women were accused of engaging in horrendous acts of satanic worship, uh, none of which actually happened. Uh, there was a, a heresy called the heresy of the free spirit, which was literally, virtually invented by the Inquisition. Inquisitors themselves. Uh, now, later in history, much later in history, uh, after the Protestant Reformation, the entire Protestant movement in Christianity was condemned as heretical. Uh, the Spanish Inquisition would arrest, torture, and burn a Protestant simply for being a Protestant. And the Spanish Inquisition also uh, targeted uh, Jews and Muslims who had converted to Catholicism uh, and were suspected of secretly practicing their own faith. Uh, but these, these are just a few of the examples. Uh, you mentioned earlier in the, the Knights Templar, and, and when you're ready, we can dig into to that example. Uh, the Knights Templar were uh, accused of being heretics as well. It was just an excuse for seizing their treasure. Well, uh, yeah, let's hang on to that thought, and let's uh, back up to just a second. And, I mean, it